Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Muriel and in this video I will be doing a book review for Ice Planet Barbarians written by Ruby Dixon. This short and rather infamous work of science fiction smut <laughs> The first in a long R series, I might add, was not unknown to me because the internet is a thing, but I never thought I would actually pick it up. It never seemed like it would be my thing, really. And yet, thanks to the playful encouragements of a friend, I decided I would, in fact, read this thing. For the sheer memory of it, if nothing else. And I must say, I was more than, yeah, pleasantly surprised by this wild and, yeah, pretty horny alien ride, all things considered. <laughs> So what is Ice Planet Barbarians about? It does feature an ice planet peopled by barbarians. <laughs> no, okay, fine. Let me set the premise for you all. One night in the galaxy far, far, no, sorry. <laughs> One night, female protagonist Georgie finds herself very rudely kidnapped by rather rapey slaver aliens and brought on board a trading spaceship where several other women await what can only be a dismal fate. After some time and a bit of action pass, the cargo hold crashes onto an ice planet where the women find themselves at the mercy of hunger and environmental exposure. Sag. Georgie is somehow designated leader of the group and decides to brave the elements in the hopes of finding food, shelter, and perhaps much needed aid. What she finds, or rather who she finds, is Vectal, a big blue humanoid native in possession of a pair of horns, a tail, a massive schlong, yes, that's right, <laughs> and amorous intent, oh yes. A tale of survival, love, and bestial lust thus ensues. And yes, if this wasn't already very bloody obvious, this will be a rather NSFW review, so expect context-appropriate vocabulary. Now, just because this is a bit of a meme review, yes, does not mean I'm going to deviate from the usual review structure I use. No, no, no. So let's start by talking about the pros. Oh, wait, that's right, there's not much to tell, is there? <laughs> I mean, okay, I can say that the writing style here was very utilitarian and straightforward. It was there to progress the story such as it is and deliver the sexy times, and that's what it did. The vocabulary employed here wasn't fancy, poetic, or evocative in the slightest, or I mean it was evocative insofar as it needed to be to convey the story's smuttiness. To my initial surprise, this is actually a dual point of view story, with our protagonist being female human Georgie, and male Sakui, that's the name of his species, Vector. Georgie uses slang and contemporary, you know, 21st century vocabulary, urban vocabulary, if you will, kind of, I guess, and that's about it. Vector, the big blue alien barbarian, talked a little bit like the stereotype of a caveman or hunter gatherer would, if you see what I mean, with naturalistic language and lots of references to mates, mating, etc. One thing in particular I do want to point out as being well done is that for a large part of the story, Vectal can't really make out Georgie's human English, and the author actually conveyed this by phonetically transcribing the way her male character actually heard the words. Not sure I can really give an example here, but I guess if Georgie said, I'm hungry, I want to use the cooking fire, Vectal would have heard, I'm hungry, cook on fire, and the author actually tried to convey that. So, you know, it's an extra step she definitely didn't need to take for, well, smut. So point there. There's obviously no real character depth to speak of here, as that is clearly not the point of such a publication. Still. Georgie, I suppose, is plucky, brave, decently loyal to her fellow abductees, and very horny for her big blue alien. That's about it. Vectal, for his part, I would say incarnates the stereotype of the gentle savage is what I'm going to call it. He's physically very male and classically masculine in some ways. He's tall, ripped, <laughs> assertive, kind of dominant, but he's also very attentive, protective, and kind of sweet in a way. He's certainly very adamant about pleasuring his woman, so yay. 
each character essentially functions as a set piece for the projection of the reader's fantasies, maybe? Or, you know, for some readers at least. Cause, yeah, can I say that? I'm gonna say that. <laughs> There's something fairly self-aware about the text, so whilst there's certainly some purposeful playing around with the trope and or fantasy of the big, strong, dominant male who's also a loving sweetie on the inside, Georgie, the character, also kind of openly comments about this. And yes, I have to admit that was kind of amusing. Let's be real, you're not going to find watertight or intensely stimulating world building in Ice Planet Barbarians, right? Or, you know, it's not going to be stimulating for your intellect in any case. If you catch my drift, there are plenty of holes, no pun intended, unless you want it, in this thing, but like I said previously, there's also a degree of playful self-awareness present that comes through some of Georgie's comments and observations regarding the aliens she encounters, or even her referencing freaking Star Wars. Yes, that did make me chuckle. So whilst I couldn't shut down my world-building cracking brain, despite the fact I knew full well I was reading smut, because apparently I'm just like that, I also laughed my head off a fair bit at some of the absurd silliness on display. Oh yes. Many chuckles and teeth. <laughs> Still, for the meme of it, because this is precisely the point after all, here are some specific points I'd like to go over and or nitpick. Bear in mind I will be spoiling elements of the story here, so skip ahead to this timestamp for the next section. So first point, you never learn where the Sahui come from, where the abductor aliens come from, or anything of that sort, just that the former themselves originally came from yet another planet. And that's fine. To be fair though, I thought it mildly amusing that Georgie calls Vector an alien when she is technically the alien on this planet. Though, additionally, and to be fair once again, I suppose that kind of thing also happens in non-smut science fiction, so eh. <laughs> Second point, you do eventually learn that the way Vector's people, so the Sakui, have adapted to life on their ice planet, and that's the way Georgie and her gal pals will have to adapt if they want to survive, involves letting a parasitic worm live inside their hearts. Said worms then make the humanoids they inhabit resistant to the cold, resistant to injuries, sickness, and fertile. Indeed, Georgie becomes pregnant. <laughs> Which, you know, shouldn't be possible given the whole cross-species aspect of it all, but the power of la- <coughs> sorry, the magic worm makes everything possible in the story, and it's also what creates the, well, yeah, the power of love, or in this instance, the soulmate level attraction for the Sahui, because it basically determines which males and females will be compatible genetically to produce healthy offspring. I'm memeing liberally here, but I'll admit I was kind of surprised there was an attempt at a somewhat legit science fiction-y explanation for the soulmate-y attraction that fuels the smut at the heart of this thing, so... A point for that, in a weird roundabout way, I guess. It's still ridiculous, mind you, but not quite as ridiculous as it could have been. Then a couple nitpicky points about anatomy, specifically because this was particularly funny to me. A. Because I guess this shit is supposed to be hot. <laughs> you tell me. Sakui males are ripped, like I said, and freaking tall. Seven feet tall to be precise. I cannot remember what that's in metric units, but it's tall as fuck basically and covered in all sorts of ridges made of, um, I'm going to assume horn here given they have horns on their heads. We're gonna go with that. And like their tongues and their penises are ridged as well. Ridged for her pleasure. Am I right? <laughs> Okay, fine, I guess. But this is the actual kicker, though, if you thought that was funny. Sakui males also have a spur on their cocks. A spur on their junk. And guess what? It's placed in such a way that it hits Georgie right on the clit during intercourse, exactly like a rabbit-style vibrator would. Because of course it does. But, um, female Sahui don't have a clitoris. This is said in the text, by the way. So riddle me this, why do males have a spur on their junk in the first freaking place? What selective pressure would lead to this particular penile feature, I ask you? The biology nerd in me needs to know. And I never will. Big sad. On a less serious note though, because the preceding stuff was totally serious, am I right? I just had to laugh at this because I was like, 
Well, isn't that convenient for Georgie, hmm? That Dom just pleasures her right. Very convenient. Bit of a plot contrivance, if you ask me, or I guess a smut contrivance? Is that a thing? And then B, the Sahui, like I said, have tails. Because of course they do. And during one sexy cuddle session between our protagonists, Georgie essentially intimates she would like to be fucked real good from behind. Like, she really has a hankering for doggy style sex. And Vector is quite surprised by this because apparently the Sahui do not made doggy style because tails. And I was like, uh, but why though? Last I checked, plenty of uh, tailed mammals copulate in the position we humans would call doggy style. I mean, it's in the freaking name, and in fact it is the default mating position for most quadruped animals, really. So that was just a bit odd and extra silly to me. I guess this was needed so Georgie could just wow besotted Vector even more with her human sex skills. Yeah. <laughs> I'm obviously not going to talk about themes here, boy. <laughs> so instead I'm going to talk about the smut factor. All in all, this was actually tamer than I expected. Like I've read some wild shit in my day. And some disturbing shit in my day too, to be honest. And Rice's beauty trilogy, am I right? Those who know, no. I've also read Story of O, Story of the Eye, stuff of that general order because curiosity, I guess, and autistic special interest. I've also read stuff that wasn't as weird, thankfully. But in any case, yes, Ice Planet Barbarians is almost as much about the pseudo romance between Georgie and Vector than the actual sex. Though, don't get me wrong, there definitely is sex in this as well. It's definitely still smart. <laughs> and it definitely centers on an interpretation of the soulmate trope, is what I'm going to call it. I don't know if that's an actual official trope in romance smart, you tell me, but that's what I'm going with. In the sense that Vector falls head over heels for Georgie and becomes convinced she is his fated mate. Speaking of mate, like I said, there's a lot of naturalistic language here, but more in an animal sort of way. I know what I mean, I hope you all know what I mean, but who knows. <laughs> so as such, I guess you could say there is a light primal motif to the smuttiness. If you don't know what primal is, it's part of the BDSM spectrum or the DNS bit of the spectrum, and I'm not going to explain it further than that. If you're curious, Google's your friend. Be careful. <laughs> Though actually that stuff is not as bad as some of the other stuff you can find on the internet. You're welcome. Otherwise, it's more or less vanilla sex here, in so far as sex between a human being and a giant blue alien with horns and a tail can be said to be vanilla, I guess. So vanilla with blue spice then? Of course, there is also the rather problematic Stockholm Syndrome adjacent aspect of it all, but that, and once again, bit of a spoiler here, so please skip to this timestamp if necessary. So that is conveniently hand-waved away by Georgie and her friends accepting the magical heartworm that will not only allow them to survive on the ice planet, because I mean they don't exactly have a choice here, but who cares, it will also make them fall in lust and love, presumably with single male Sahui, so everyone can kind of live happily ever after, or fuck happily ever after at the very least, Am I right? <laughs> On the other hand, Vector, and presumably his brethren, are really and I mean really big on pleasuring their mates. Like they go above and beyond making sure their female counterparts come and come hard. So you got to give it to them there. Goddess knows some human men could take pointers from them. Am I right, ladies? It's a joke, it's a joke, don't tag me. <laughs> In that regard, I suppose it's relatively female friendly smudge which I suppose should make sense, given it was, after all, written by a female author, though once again, you be the judge of that. Ice Planet Barbarians is incredibly silly, and even somewhat cringe in places, and it kind of knows it. It may or may not work as much that will entirely depend on your own preferences and proclivities, but I will say this. I can appreciate and respect, and did, to a certain extent, what the author accomplished here, so Kind of kudos. I sincerely doubt I'll read the many, many sequels, but I genuinely found this first installment enjoyable overall. Yes, I did, dear audience. It was truly hilarious at times, and as such, I confidently stand by my six blue eggplants out of ten rating. Who knows if I'll try SFF Smart again in the future? Only time shall tell.
And that concludes this review for Ice Planet Barbarians, written by Ruby Dixon. I hope it was decently entertaining for you all. Would I recommend this? I honestly don't freaking know. I just don't. Kind of and not. So you make of that what you will. <laughs> but that will be all for this video. So I wish you all a lovely day, evening, or whichever time of day you prefer. Do take good care of yourselves. Thank you for the continued support. And I will see you all hopefully reasonably soon in about a week for an actual rot review this time. But until then, bye-bye.